Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Well, the rain's finally come in. It's it's not much yet. I mean, we may get some more. They're calling for more rain for the next several hours. But right now, it's just kind of a drizzle. But from my perspective of being exhausted over the last few days of having a big influx of uh, emergency calls that I've gone on, Knowing that the likelihood of having any kind of wildfire call for the next, you know, 24 hours or so is a good thing for me. So I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that, at least. I, I want to clarify on the video that I made this morning. I know a lot of you watched it. A lot of you are very outraged and concerned. And then some of you are saying, well, I went and I read that legislation. And it doesn't say anything in there that if you have a homeschool or if you homeschool your kids, you're going to be a, in a felon if you have a gun. Before I explain, I want to make it clear that this is very common with, with any type of legislation. They don't just plainly spell it out, folks. Um, I go into more detail over on my Locals channel today in the video, so you can go watch that um, or, or sign up. That's where the, the free speech platform that I post stuff that is unfiltered there. Um, but they don't just flat out say in these bills this stuff. You have to understand how they, you know, well, this is going to change here and then this and then it'll apply this law and this law. So there is a paragraph down the lower, I think, two thirds of that bill. And it talks about redefining the definition of homeschool. <clears throat> it's talking about uh, uh, school choice funding, right? And, and it, it creates this this new term for uh, a type of school choice and all this kind of stuff. But then it says it's going to re read this bill redefines the definition of homeschool. It's redefining the word homeschool to school legally. But above that, it lists all these state statutes that now will apply to that. So as before this bill, uh, there were only a couple of state statutes regarding public education or any type of education that applied to homeschooling. You know, you had to, you had to, you know, show that you in the state of Missouri, that you, your, your child received so many hours a year in, in, in education. You know, they don't dictate what that is, but you have to spend so many hours, all this kind of stuff. So there was only a couple of statutes that applied to homeschoolers. But now with this changing that definition of homeschool to school Above that that paragraph in the bill, it lists all of these statutes in the state of Missouri that will now apply to that new redefined term. And if you go through and look up all those statutes, it's not listed there, of course. You have to look them up. <clears throat> Some of those statutes talk about having a loaded weapon in a school is a felony. Um, there are, there have been, I'm not naming names, but there, cause there's still things being done behind closed doors, try to get this thing killed. Uh, but there, there's been some prominent conservative, not Rhino necessarily, conservative Republicans in the Missouri state house that have said, well, we, we don't really think that, that a district attorney or prosecuting attorney would, would use this against homeschoolers because, you know, we don't have any type of Soros funded, uh, you know, activist prosecutors anywhere in this country. And then the, and then one of them went on to say, but but if that did happen, if 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 they tried to use this new terminology to prosecute homeschoolers as felons because they had firearms in their homes, uh, we, we, we believe we believe that the uh, that, that the court system would would side with with the, you know, with the homeschoolers and the, the, the pro-gun rights, you know, the, we, we believe that. So in other words, you know, we're going to throw homeschoolers out to the wolves because we need to get this funding passed that we want to spend this money in, in you know, in school choice. Uh, but we're going to throw throw the homeschoolers under the bus to get this passed. And we're just going to believe that the, that the judicial system isn't going to take this redefining of terms and use it against homeschoolers. Yeah, right. Because we've never in this country seen uh, prosecutors or judges use their authority and their positions to stick it to us conservatives, right? I mean, Randy Weaver, you know, he 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 didn't, you know, he he won his day in court, right? If you know who Randy Weaver is, he won his day in court. You know, in the end, in the end, it was determined that he was in the right, that he won this this settlement and everything. I mean, he he, he lost everything. To get to that point, I mean, Donald Trump, he's certainly not dealing with any kind of activist, you know, 
prosecutors and judges at all. So, so to say, well, you know, we don't think that this new redefining of terms and stuff is going to, to really affect homeschoolers. It's opening a big wide doorway. No, it does not specifically say that now if you homeschool, you're going to be a felon if you, because that's not what the bill's about, but it's changing terms and it's attaching the statutes to this new term, which is a legal way of saying these statutes up here at the top of this paragraph that's in relation to the paragraph, that's going to be now part of it. And it clearly states in that paragraph, this bill redefines the term homeschool. Okay, so that, that's where we're going with this. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't just clearly define it like what you would expect. There, there's nothing in the legal system that's plain and clear. Okay, it just, it just isn't. They, this happens in every state, on the federal level, everywhere, where they, they, they mix words and split hairs and everything, and the common man reads it, and they're like, well, I don't, it looks fine to me. Yeah, I guess I'll vote for it. But then their attorneys are back there. <laughs> if they only knew what we're going to do once that becomes law. And that's what's happening with this one. In other news today, in other news, um, the United States has said that they have solid evidence and they believe that an imminent attack is happening on Israel by Iran within the next 24 to 48 hours. I mean, I, I, there's no way that it would be some kind of false flag by the United States and Israel that would allow it to happen for so that, you know, there could be an excuse to. Anyways, you know, that would never happen. But um, yeah. It, it, the next 24 to 48 hours, it's possible that things are going to fire off and kick off big time in the Middle East. And we'll wait and see because there's been so many things. It, it, Iran and several other countries are saying that, you know, nuclear targets in, in Israel are, are on the table. Or Israel's saying that they're going to hit nuclear targets on, in, in Iran, their nuclear production facilities. All kinds of stuff are, are being really heavily talked about. So the next 24 to 48 hours could be kind of crazy. Maybe. Um, inflation numbers went up again today. I know everyone is shocked. It's pick your jaw up off the floor. Okay. I know you would have never, ever, ever believed that inflation is going up, but apparently it is. Uh, and between that and the news about Iran and Israel, oil prices are skyrocketing. And there's all kinds of worry that we're going to see a hundred plus barrel oil maybe in days, uh, which is going to just make inflation go up even more. So, I mean, you can't stock up on gasoline uh, as, forever, but it doesn't hurt to have some, okay? You should always have at, at least some supply, you know. If 15 gallons, you know, that's five of those red ch junky gas cans that don't work anymore unless you buy a different nozzle on them. But if you got three of those, the, the big ones are five gallons, so that's 15 gallons. I know that's not everything. I get it. Rotate them out. That way they're not sitting there too long. That really should be a minimum because 15 gallons in most vehicles will get you to where you need to go in an emergency. Um, so I, so I, would, I would recommend having that. Um, they found uh, bird flu, H5, H5N1, bird flu in another dairy herd. This, this one, I think it was in North Carolina, maybe South Carolina, but I think it was North Carolina. Uh, and, you know, there's been a lot of talk about that. CDC has supposedly met with uh, health officials in all the different states, telling them to get prepared for this, uh, to get ready that, that yeah, there, there could be the, the next 2.0 pandemic happen. And, and of course, the experts, there's all this news in the, about these experts, these scientists, you know, experts, are saying that this one's going to be 100 times worse than coronavirus, uh, that up to 50% of the people could die if they get this which would fit really well with their depopulation goals, you know, um, you know, kill off half the Americans and allow all the illegals to run the joint. I mean, that's not going to ever happen. OK, I'm just it's sarcasm, folks. It's not ever going to happen. Don't worry. But, um, yeah, a lot of things going on and. It's just it's just more indication of getting getting ready for things that's going, that's happening. And, and and I'm not I don't want anyone to be scared about this. I don't want you to to overreact and panic. 
And I, I, I even talk about that often on this channel about, you know, the doom and gloom and the panic. Stop doing that. Uh, you do need to know. You, you should be aware of this stuff so that it, it helps you create a, to be a better guarded against it. You know, a better defense plan against what's going on. And, and possibly to encourage you also to continue to prepare more. Um, they, they, they're after us, folks. I said that this morning. If you look at all the stuff that's happening, um, as much as I don't agree with Donald Trump on a lot of stuff, you know, everyone's right sometimes. And he was right about the thing that, you know, they're, they're not after him, they're after us. And, and he was just standing in, in the way. Uh, that part I may not agree with 100%, but um, they're after us. They want to, to shut up the, the traditional, conservative, Bible-believing, pro-family, pro-morality people because it, it doesn't fit within their globalist reset woke plans. It doesn't. Uh, they, they, can't, they can't do the things that they want to do and push the agenda that they want as long as there's a bunch of us still around or still speaking or still having any kind of voice. And that's why they're trying to trying to tear us down. That, that homeschooling, that I I can promise you, that most people in government, in the positions, whether they're woke left people or they're just being paid speaking mouthpieces, um, they want to get rid of homeschooling. That that's a that's dangerous to them. They can't control, they can't control what's what a, a, the next generation is being taught. Um, and that, that's, that's why to me, homeschooling is quite possibly one of the most single, most important things that you should do. I, I'm, I know I don't talk about it enough. Uh, you absolutely need to get your children out of these corrupt, demonic, evil indoctrination centers. Now, I know by just saying that there's going to be a lot of people that say, yeah, but the school here where I'm at is good. I get that. In fact, where I live, the local schools around here are amazing. They are amazingly good. I, I know several of the employees and, and leaders. They are awesome. And, you know, if I didn't know about homeschooling or I wasn't a homeschool parent and everything, I'd probably, you know, I would say, hey, this is a great school. And so I get it, you know. If that's all you can do, and you do have an amazing school, but the point is, the problem is, it's not that the schools are all bad because the leadership or the teachers, there are certainly many that are, that have just gone full on woke, but there's a lot of small rural schools that have amazing principals and superintendents and school boards and teachers. That's not the problem. It's the problem that, that the way the legal system is set up, the state and the feds really control a lot about what they do. And, and can really control the, the the message that's being taught. And that's the problem. It's not the teachers and the principals and all that, not in every school. It's how they're run at the higher levels. And I, I'm just telling you, if you can homeschool your children, please do so. Um, I, there's no greater gift that you can give your children. There's nothing greater that you can do for your children than to educate them yourselves. Uh, it's... And then the, the the bond that you build with them, uh, helping them grow up on a firmer foundation is, is is there's there's a benefit there that I don't think there's any number can be placed on that. Anyways, um, yeah, this Israel Iran thing. I mean, we'll know in the next twenty four forty eight hours, I guess, uh, or at least two or three days. But according to the U.S. government, it's it's getting it's like game on time. The full on game on time. Uh, so we'll wait and see what happens because, you know, there's nothing that we can do here to stop it other than just get prepared a little bit more because uh, it's going to cause oil prices to skyrocket. Um, inflation will go up. Um, and, and then who knows what potential, you know, reactions will happen here. You know, certain cells may be activated and, and, and do things here that could disrupt us here in America. So we need to be ready for that. It's always time to get your houses in order. Should have been doing that a long time ago if you haven't been already. 
You need to be preparing yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.